guys, welcome back. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Tech Tuesday. Yo ho, yo ho, Pirates Life for me. I'm not yeah. actually gonna sing the lyrics because I don't want to get sued. Yeah. But those are the lyrics that I have to presume are currently being sung by Gottfried Schwarzholm, sure. Frederick Nige, uh -huh. Peter Sunde, and Carl Lundstrom. Are those all enemies of, like, like villains in a superhero movie or something? No, those are the four founders of the Pirate oh, Bay, okay. arguably the most notorious BitTorrent tracking site in the history of torrenting. Yeah, because their most recent lawsuit in Belgian court ended in an acquittal of all charges related to criminal copyright infringement and abuse of electronic communications. How did they get away with it, you say? According to the defendants, they sold off the site back in 2006 to a company based in Seychelles, which is a bunch of islands off the eastern coast of Africa. Real easy to hide money away yeah. out, out there. So anyway, since the charges that the Belgian court was bringing against them all took place between 2011 and 2013, the defendants were able to successfully deny any involvement on the basis that they would completely severed their ties with the Pirate Bay years earlier. Yeah, of course, this isn't the first nor probably the last lawsuit for the Pirate Bay founders. Back in 2009, a Swedish court was able to convict them of copyright charges, resulting in a $4.8 million fine and a year of jail time for each of them that was eventually reduced in exchange for more money after a round of appeals. That's all they want. That's Jesus for the Money. Give the Swedish courts your money. Yes. And then we go and make some meatballs. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, that's the problem with being the most visible and uh, notorious. Yeah, you're a masthead for a company that is dealing in illegal stuff. Sounds like they made money, though. But let's move on, though, because we thought we had covered the whole crisis over at Reddit.com on last week's episode of Tech Tuesday. But in the week since, uh, a whole lot has gone down. And it's looking more and more like the powers that be over there don't really know what the hell they're doing. Either that or they're evil. Yeah. Hard to, it's one or the other. Sure. I don't know. So yeah, just a couple days after CEO Ellen Pau issued a bunch of formal apologies all over Reddit and the traditional media regarding how poorly they've been handling things the last few months, she just up and stepped down from her post. Yep. And now Steve Huffman, one of the uh, original Reddit co-founders, will be taking her place. But maybe all was right again in the world of Reddit. Possibly. Uh, well, if you listen to former Reddit CEO Yishan Wong, who was Powell's predecessor before he himself stepped down from the position, the big Reddit revolt that led to this wasn't even Powell's fault. So yeah, we're talking about the firing of Victoria Taylor, of course. She was the Reddit employee who helped facilitate communication between Reddit and its mods, and apparently did a lot to help make the Ask Me Anything subreddit the huge mainstream success that it is. Yeah, according to Yishan Wong, the blame for that firing actually rests on Alexis Ohanian, uh, one of Reddit's co-founders who is currently executive chairman of the board, essentially making him Pal's superior. Wong said, when the hate train started up against Pow, Alexis should have been out front and center saying very clearly, Ellen Pow did not make this decision. I did. Instead, he just sat back and let her take the heat. That's a stunning lack of leadership and an incredibly shitty thing to do. I actually asked that he be on the board when I joined. I used to respect Alexis Ohanian. After this, not quite so much. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> So obviously that's some serious shade being thrown at the dude who basically runs Reddit from a former CEO of Reddit, all on display for the public on Reddit. But this kind of thing actually kind of falls in line with what they're trying to do with Reddit and what led to all this bullshit. The general consensus seems to be that Reddit wants to get public figures to use their site the same way they use Twitter and Facebook. Not just showing up for AMAs, but actually using the site as normal users. So we're gonna kick that off by having all of our current and former employees argue with each other <laughs> yeah. on our site about Publicly. what they did right and wrong. Great idea. <laughs> Of course, making Reddit more accessible to new users, famous and non-famous alike, as well as fulfilling all of their recent promises about improving moderator tools is gonna require a lot of back-end work. So the fact that Reddit's VP of Engineering, Bethany Blunt, just quit her job after only two months doesn't bode too well for any of that. No, uh, in an interview with Recode, Blount was, well, blunt about why she left the position, saying, I feel like there are going to be some big bumps on the road ahead for Reddit. Along the way, there are some very aggressive implied promises being made to the community. In comments to mods, quotes from board members, and they're going to have some pretty big challenges in meeting those implied promises. Ugh, I mean, she would know. I love how everyone's just doing this all in public. Yeah. Everything about this is really weird. It's and, the Reddit way, I guess. I guess. Yeah. They, they, they tried to keep it private yeah. and like, 
traditional, you know, companies don't usually air out all their dirty laundry, but sure. congratulations, Redditors, you won. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, the community is what really won in all of this. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah, none of this really bodes all that well for Reddit's future, mm -hmm. at least the future that its investors envision. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, pretty much everything that either of us does on Reddit remains pretty much totally untouched by all of this. Yeah. Uh, I, aside from the AMA threads that I don't even visit that much unless it's something I care about, Nothing that I yeah, do no, on no, there. It's all, has all the subreddits all. that I visit are user supported, and uh, those users go out and get animated GIFs of pornography and put them on the site yeah. for me to look at. So and they're not concerned with the politics yeah. of the actual site. Yeah, just pornography. Anyways, let's move on to Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that planet that isn't a planet, but then it was a planet again, but then it wasn't a planet again, but then it, uh, uh, what the fuck? I think the scientific term is large rock. Dwarf planet is now the official term. Is that politically correct? Who knows? <laughs> anyway, back when Pluto was an official planet, NASA <laughs> orchestrated a high-tech mission to send the New Horizons space probe on the uh, just ridiculous <laughs> four and a half billion mile trip uh, for all you people that don't live in America, Liberia, or Burma, that's seven and a half billion kilometers. I got a real kick out of the fact that <laughs> this is the only three countries that still leading the pack. <laughs> yeah, technically we are, compared to Liberia and Burma. By quite a <laughs> wide margin, too. <laughs> sure. Hey, the rest of the world, catch up. We're, we're over here doing miles. Anyways, the, uh, <laughs> the dwarf planet has never been photographed or fully explored until today. Today. Yes. So after the journey, which lasted almost a decade, Woo. the New Horizon spacecraft has finally made its closest approach so far. About 7,750 miles above the surface, officially making it the first ever space mission to ever explore a world so far away from Earth. Yeah. In a press release about the mission today, it was said by a man whose title is too long to say. I say but, it. All right. He is assistant to the president for science and technology and director of the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, that guy said. <laughs> the exploration of Pluto and its moons by New Horizons represents the capstone event to 50 years of planetary exploration by NASA and the United States. Once again, we have achieved a historic first. The United States is the first nation to reach Pluto. Bam! We still use inches. <laughs> and with this mission, has completed the initial survey of our solar system, a remarkable accomplishment that no other nation can match. Or probably even try to, yeah. try to attempt. We put our flag on Pluto. Come and take it from us. <laughs> what is it, the queen's gonna be like, we gotta get over to Pluto. Um, yes. We need to send off a I don't think anyone planet. even cares. Well, I was just like, it's not even a real planet anymore. It's Although I guess it still was when they started the mission. But you got to imagine that they were like, oh, fuck, it got downgraded. Like after they just spent all this money to, to turn around, <laughs> bring it back, bring it to Mars, get a good shot of Earth. It's beautiful. Yeah. So what does this mean to our generation of people who don't give a shit about anything that's actually a crazy technological advancement, unless it somehow keeps our phones charged longer? Well, I mean, we get a lot of pretty pictures of something that we didn't have pretty pictures of before. We get a couple hashtags that boil down to, hashtag we did it! Hey, we did! Hashtag I fucking love science, even yeah. though I don't understand science. But at least NASA <laughs> is trying to get young people to give a shit about this, yeah. uh, because they've released the most detailed image of Pluto ever taken on Instagram before posting it anywhere else. They should have done it on Snapchat. And then a dick for comparison, because yeah. it's a small planet. It is very small. <laughs> yeah. I got Pluto looks like, my pants. Pluto looks like it got, went inside a cold pool and came out compared to other planets. The Raisin Planet. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, the photos coming back from this exploration are phenomenal and fascinating. It kind of looks like the Death Star. Yeah. It's kind of hard to believe that we can experience something that's pretty much an incomprehensible distance away from us. All, all on the yeah, same day. All together. Just, dip, dip, just set it back. It's fucking mind blowing. The, the fact fucking Wi Fi that NASA's getting from the damn New Horizons. <laughs> we get better than the Wi Fi at the Hilton San Diego. Even upload a video. They're sending back pictures from <laughs> 7 billion miles away. Ah! It's ridiculous. <laughs> really grinds my gears. Hotel industry in this country needs to catch up. Oh, I'm losing it. All right. <laughs> Speaking of mind blowing, ever since YouTube implemented native 360 degree video, we've been getting more and more awesome video uploads out of it, like this one, our tech video of the week, which puts you in the cockpit of a Swiss fighter jet flying in formation with its squad over the Alps. I mean, they don't do war, so they uh, this might as well do something. Gotta be the best job in the world being yeah. a Swiss fighter pilot. Right? right? Great job security, just get to fly around. Defending all that Nazi gold they yeah. hid in Switzerland. Anyway, as with all of these 360 degree videos, do it on your phone so you can go like this. Yeah. Because uh, clicking, one of those yeah, things. or cardboard, clicking and dragging, uh, it sucks. But yeah. if you uh, put your phone up. Uh, also, I, I kind of wanted to add in, even though this kind of sounds like an ad, 
I guess it is. I don't know what how to explain it, but Amazon's doing this crazy thing tomorrow called Prime Day. Oh, yeah. Where if you're a Prime member, they're claiming that it's going to have crazier deals than Black Friday. And which, so far, so good. And they're opening their same day delivery service in a bunch of markets. So you could potentially get, say like you wanted a TV for a super cheap price that's going to be there. And you can have it at your doorstep by like 5 p.m. if you order it in the morning, which is nuts. They didn't really say too much about what they're going to be offering as far as exact prices, but you can expect all of their Kindle products, their Fire Stick. They'll probably just add that phone to whatever package. If you get a package of gum, they'll probably throw the phone Please in for take free. the Fire Phone. Please, someone take the Fire Phone. Give it what? to your baby. Yeah. <laughs> what time? I have no idea. Like, we'll, You'll figure we'll it out. It Go to Amazon.com. It's all over their website. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's great. This is just their excuse to clear out their warehouses. Yeah, no, it's, it's, <laughs> the, summer, it. it's the summertime Please. version of Black Friday. I love it. I, I'm glad I spent zero money at Comic-Con because yeah. I'm going to spend a bunch of money tonight at midnight. They, they did say that video games will be included in this, so get ready for that. Some game deals tomorrow. Anyways, we'll catch you guys next time. Check out all of our Comic-Con footage over here. Please check it out because otherwise we won't get to go next year. Yeah. And then you'll feel bad probably. You'll feel really bad. Or you won't, which is fine, but we'd appreciate it. Bye.